truth under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, again, welcome. And just a reminder, if you would, to uh, silence your cell phones. And there's meeting documents at the end of the uh, table here. And if you need a listening device, Robert in the front row would be able to help you with that. Uh, we'll start with routine business. Item one is consider a motion to approve the agenda. It's my motion. Sorry. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the agenda. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion unanimously passes. Item two is to approve the county commission minutes of April 21st, 2015. Move to approve the minutes. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any corrections? If not, those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Motion unanimously passes. Item three are bills to be paid in the amount of $629,808.76. Motion to pay the bills. Second. We have a motion and a second to pay the bills. Is there any comments? Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Barth. Today's bills include uh, $250,000 uh, towards our fire departments in the county. Uh, for example, Colton got $18,000, Crooks $14,000. Del Rapids, uh, 24000 This is just the first, first half of those uh, distributions. Again, uh, out of the 600 and, uh, 629000 in today's bills, 250000 went to the fire departments. Okay. Any other comments? If not, we have a motion and a second to approve the bills. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Item four are reports, and there are none today. Item five is personnel actions. A is consider a motion to approve the routine personnel actions. Move the routine action. Second. Any comments or questions for HR? If not, we have a motion and a second to approve. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Unanimously passes. Thank you. Item six is application for abatement. Kyle Hilseth. Good morning, Commissioners. Kyle Halseth, Director of Equalization. We bring forward to you for your consideration this morning three requests for abatements. And I've got to get the cheaters on because I can't read them anymore. Huh. Uh, the first one being from a Heidi Skanky. I think that's how it's pronounced. Record ID 87011-2014 property taxes in the amount of $208.10. We're recommending approval. Any questions for Kyle? We need to take these one at a time. Okay. Move for approval. Second. Motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second to approve RDID 8711. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion unanimously passes. The second request is from a Benjamin Davis, record ID 83978 for 2014 property taxes in the amount of $1,455.41. We're recommending denial. There was never an application on file. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I move to deny. Second. We have a motion and a second to deny. Is there anyone in the audience who wants to discuss that? If not, we have a motion and a second to deny. All those in favor of the denial say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. The third is from a Debbie, Debbie <coughs> A. Ulrich, record ID 83494, 2014 property taxes in the amount of $1,611.27. Recommend approval. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and a second to approve RDID 83494. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion unanimously passes. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you. Item 7 are notices and requests. Item A is to authorize the county auditor to publish a notice of sale of county surplus property by auction for one John Deere 7210 tractor with Tiger Mower, asset number 59150, by Weeman Land and Auction on June 3rd, 2015. Good morning, Commissioner Good morning. Shannon Schultz. Assistant Highway Superintendent, <clears throat> so on January 27th, uh, this commission declared our existing John Deere tractor, item number 7210, with the mower um, as a surplus. And as you'll recall, we kind of got a deal through the John Deere Corporation 
uh, via James River out of Madison uh, to lease tractors for a dollar. <clears throat> and so, uh, it just so happens yesterday we took delivery of that tractor and the mower, and uh, our, our, our staff is learning how to operate it and use it, and so it's, it's all good. And so, um, <clears throat> here we are formally declaring our existing asset uh, as a surplus item so it can be auctioned. It would be auctioned at, at Wyman Auctions. Uh, we also have a stipulation that we must publish it in a local newspaper, and so that's what this uh, agenda item is for. Does anyone have any questions for Shannon? Is this a one-time lease, or is it? It's for this year, and it, the program has been in existence for a number of years, and so we, we very much hope that it will continue, and, and I guess um, in the foreseeable future, we're kind of banking on it, so. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I would uh, make a motion to uh, authorize the auditor to publish notice of sale. Second. Thank you. We have a notice, or I mean a, a motion and a second to approve the publishing of a notice. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Motion unanimously passes. Thank you. Thank you, Shannon. Item 8 are planning and zoning notices, and there are none today. Item 9 is a petition for compromise of lien. Commissioner Barr. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, we have an application for compromise of lien number uh, 66844 in the amount of $20,571. Uh, the applicant has uh, applied to compromise this uh, upon full payment or payment of between three and $5,000. There's no real estate involved, uh, but the applicant hopes to resolve the lien so he can purchase a home in the future. Uh, the original lien uh, totaled uh, $31,503 between uh, 2008 and 2010. The vast majority of this, that, uh, in fact, $30,692.23 was related to hospitalization and care uh, in 2008. Uh, the other uh, was $807.80. That was a combined total for public defender services on three occasions. Uh, through the annual lien cleanup, we reduced it to $10,929.03. Annually, as you know, we uh, reduce some uncollectible liens and some large amount liens to be more manageable if the applicant or if the party has passed away or there's been no activity for X number of years. In any case, uh, the, in the application, uh, uh, the, uh, he says he was had some issues for 22 years, cost him his family, home, vehicles, and job. He's now been sober for six years and is still trying to uh, fix things up. Uh, he uh, understands he has to repay this and uh, is hoping that we, something less than the total amount can be arranged. Uh, the applicant lists uh, assets of about 10000 uh, with a motorcycle, uh, but he owes uh, nearly 30000 in child support, 1100 to a collection agency, and a monthly vehicle lease of $447. His tax return uh, shows an income of $57,910, uh, of which uh, 4200 was wages and salaries. The remaining was in, form, uh, in the form of uh, business interests. Um, the applicant is present, and uh, you know, at this point, I guess uh, maybe we could invite him to uh, say a few words, but he doesn't have to come to the podium, he doesn't have to identify himself, and uh, you know, uh, maybe he can explain why he thinks we should accept this offer. Okay. Uh, as uh, Commissioner Barr said, the person who is uh, petitioning this uh, lien can stay seated right where they're at. They do not have to come to the podium. They do not have to identify themselves. Uh, so if anyone would like to make comments, they're welcome to do that. If not, that's uh, comfortable for us also. Okay. That would be me. Okay. Um, like, like I said, uh, could you speak up a little louder, please? Yeah, yeah. I was uh, I was a meth addict from from age 14 to 36. Um, I created a lot of wreckage in the, in the years that I was using. Um, probably 100 percent of it was all on my making. Um, threw away my family, threw away my kids, uh, everything. Um, February 
this February, six years clean, and you know, I'm still in the process of cleaning up all that records, and I know that this is a part of it. Um, I looked in uh, trying to purchase a home so I could move out of my mom's basement um, with my kids. I've got an amazing relationship with my kids today, and uh, come to find out, you know, we were looking at maybe buying fixer uppers, live in it for a couple of years, sell it, and come to find out I cannot sell it because of this judgment and this lien. And, you know, I, I, you know, I. It was an accident that, that got me most of this bill. Um, um, and I know that it can't just all be wiped away and gone. I mean, I accept responsibility of the bills that I have not paid. And I'm just, like I said, I'm just trying to clean up the records of my past and get all this, this behind me. And it seems like every time I try to go and do something, that something else pops up. And this is just another one of them. And hopefully I'm getting near the end of all this. And, like I said, I take full responsibility, and, and any any help I can get would be greatly appreciated. And basically, that's all I got. Thank you. Any comments or questions, Commissioner Kelly? Well, just a comment. I mean, you've really completed the 12 steps, and uh, uh, I commend anybody that's got coming off an addiction like that that can recover or is in recovery. Uh, I'd like to bring a motion of. On payment of five thousand dollars, five thousand eight hundred and seven dollars and eighty cents, uh, we'd remove the lien, and I'll make a comment afterwards. Mr. Kelly, would you tell me the amount again? Five thousand. Five thousand eight hundred and seven dollars and eighty cents. I'll tell you why in a minute. I'll second that for discussion, Mr. Chair. That's a uh, thank you. That's 100% uh, of the public defender services and the balance against the hospital bill. Okay. Any questions? Uh, Commissioner Barth? I, I appreciate that explanation, Commissioner Kelly. And I will say that uh, one of the things that weighs in favor of an applicant any time is if they've had a history of, of making payments. And you've not done that. We've had people that have come in and made payments every month for six years and you know maybe just small payments of say ten dollars twenty five dollars but it, it sure does add in their favor but i am uh, somewhat appreciative of commissioner kelly's uh, number uh, based on i know his strong support for that the public defender type issue and i, I will support it any other comments uh, I have to tell you that after I read through this, <clears throat> um, I'm uh, very appreciative of the fact that for six years you've been sober. I think that's awesome, and uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, able to reclaim, if you will, your relationship with your kids. That's pretty neat. <clears throat> I'm going to lose my voice before we're done. Um, we have a motion and a second to settle this lien for five thousand eight hundred and seven dollars and eighty cents correct eight hundred and seventy I, I thought oh does it eight oh seven eighty plus eight oh seven so it's, thank you it's, uh, yeah plus ten five so we have five thousand eight hundred and seven dollars and eighty cents correct right we're in agreement uh, I think we need a roll call vote please Commissioner Barth aye Kelly aye Benega Yes, that's the deal. Uh, you can meet with uh, staff and they can talk to you about how that's going to work your, work your way out of this whole issue. And thank you for coming and thank you for giving your testimony. Good luck. Hopefully we... Uh, can I tell one more thing out there? Um, for the last eight years of my addiction, I made it my own personal use. Um, today, I'm the children's ministry leader at Celebrate Church and I bring to our kids with addictions also. So. Okay. Very good. Good luck. Thanks. <clears throat> now is the time for an opportunity for public comment. Uh, if anyone would like to make any public comments in, that is not on an agenda item, they can do that. Does anyone have any public comments? Good morning. Yeah. The handheld mic. Okay. Good morning. 
Good morning, County Commissioners. I am Travis Arneson. 814 West 20th Street. From Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And I'm with the Sioux Falls JCs. And because we are a youth leadership organization, I would like my high school daughter to take over. Good morning, County Commission. I'm Grace Arnes Grace Marie Arneson, and I live with him. At, sadly, just kidding. At 814 West 20th Street, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. We are here to ask your support of the 48th annual 4th of July event. In total, it costs $40,000 and it costs $25,000 for the fireworks display, $3,000 for the inflatables, and the remaining money for EMT, food for volunteers, courtesy cards, supporting our troops, face painting, and insurance. We'd also like to thank all our volunteers. It takes a total of 40. And we'd like to thank our supporters, such as Grand Falls Casino Golf and Resort. They put on a win, win with a bang. And this is if you donate $10 to the JCs, they will put $10 on your member club card. And so you're out nothing but fun. <laughs> and Frying Pan has also stepped up with the raffle. You buy a $5 raffle. And you get a coupon. For a buy one, get one meal. This is up to a $13 value. So you already win eight bucks. <laughs> But the grand prize winner will win $500. We are here today before you. To ask for your personal support and the support of the community. If you want to volunteer, donate money, or just come celebrate with us. Our office is at a thousand one thousand Northwest Avenue at Sioux Falls, South Dakota, five seven one oh four. If you would like to donate money. Our office number is six oh five three three eight nine seven four one. And our mobile is six oh five three five one. 5034.
Thank you, Grace Marie, and thank you, Travis, for being here. Uh, does anyone have any questions for either one of those individuals? Mr. Chairman, I just would make a comment that yes. uh, in the past uh, we have been able to support uh, you. I, I don't know that we'll be able to this year, but it is a great opportunity for you to bring this forward to the community and, uh, and get some publicity for this effort. Uh, clearly, the Fourth of July fireworks at the, at the uh, field <coughs> are uh, an integral part of what we do on the 4th of July uh, in the city of Sioux Falls. Uh, we also have other other towns in the county that uh, that have their own celebrations. But those of us uh, in the room and those of us watching, I would urge them to uh, support the uh, JCs there. And again, their address is 1000 Northwest Avenue at 57104. Thank you, Commissioner. Any other comments? Again, thank you for coming and thanks for leading this charge and certainly for your involvement and extra energy. We appreciate all those things that you're doing for the community and we will stay in touch. Thank you for your support and time. Thank you. Is there anyone else that has a public comment? I wasn't aware that one of my neighbors was going to be here this morning. Just a little history lesson. Uh, you're going to have to identify oh, yourself yeah. because we have Colby. no clue who you are. <laughs> Robert Colby, antagonist, <laughs> city of Sioux Falls. You need the uh, appropriate street address? Please. 636 West 21st Street. How many of you know what CBM is? Okay. Just a little history lesson. It was about 20 or 25 years ago, I was going to say Commissioner McFarland because he's retiring and I'm going to elevate him a little bit and clarify and, and verify what I'm going to say and he'll, he'll correct me if I'm wrong. But um, we had a bid process for the food service at the jail. And we sat and we del uh, deliberated at great length and two uh, organizations came in and w one was within one cent per meal of the other. That was CBM. And that's also catering by Marlins, if you aren't aware. And so we did what we thought was appropriate. Uh, Commissioner, I think it was Tweet, was the one who made the motion, and I think it was a unanimous vote, that we would give the local business it's our business, and they have gone on to become a rather uh, large regional force in dealing with institutional meals. And all because of one cent difference, they were close, but we gave them a shot, and they have gone on to become something of a great business asset to our community, as well as to the region. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Any other uh, comments from anybody else on the opportunity for public comment? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Again, this would be in re reference to anything except what's on the uh, agenda. Well, I don't know what's on the agenda. I got okay. here late, but this is in re reference to that Dakota Access Pipeline. Is that okay to talk it about? It certainly that is. Here? Yep. Okay, my name's Oren Guidey. My address, address is 46134 263rd Street at Hartford. And I believe back in January, you were presented with the proposal from Dakota Access Pipeline about their route going west to Sioux Falls. And as a property owner, along with my sister and a few other landlords or other land landlords out there, we are opposed to having this pipeline come through our property for a number of reasons. Uh, I have three wells on that section and I draw water out of. I'm not hooked up to rural water, so if they have a leak or something like that, it's going to affect my operation. I run about 200 head of cattle out there and about 75 head of buffalo. So it would take a substantial amount of water to supplement them if I have to switch over to rural water. And I like my drinking water. I, I've tasted rural water and I don't care for it too much, but that's, that's what I grew up with. So 
and I've been living on this home place all my life, which is 56 years. So, and the proposed route is going to be coming through a pasture of mine. Is and this is where I have my buffalo confined, I guess. And that's the only parcel of ground that I can put these animals on because it requires better fences and the operation to move them to another facility is quite, you know, it's dangerous. Either a person gets hurt or an animal gets hurt and I just soon not have to deal with that. Now they have not said what they would do to help me with that. Uh, in fact, they haven't really said anything in the last month or so because we have not given them permission to survey our ground, so they have put a temporary restraining order against us, and they'll be coming towards a, a, a judgment, I suppose, here in May sometime. So until then, they are not allowed to be on my property. Also, the property I have is gonna be tiled, and I'm worried about them coming through and disrupting my outlet for my tile. And if they do have a break in, on that property with the tile. I imagine some of that oil is probably gonna go downstream, which all flows towards Sioux Falls. So I would be a little concerned that you are concerned enough to, that maybe we should be a little more uh, concerned about where this pipeline is going. Also, I'm three miles from Wall Lake, and I don't know if too many of them residents are aware of what's coming down the pipe, but uh, if that gets into Wall Lake, I would assume that all that uh, water is going to be contaminated and property values would dis diminish. And I, one other thing, I've checked with the insurance for liability on this, and if I have an episode where I cause damage or something to a pipeline, I cannot get insurance to cover that. It's going to have to come out of my own pocket. And I, I don't know. I just don't feel that that's... It's my ground. I shouldn't have to put up with a private company coming through there. Um, <clears throat> that eminent domain, I guess, is, is a big sticker. I, I don't have anything against that for, for public use, but this is a private company, and them coming through and declaring eminent domain on my property, I don't think that's right. But that's another issue. So I just wish, wish, I don't know where you folks are at on this pipeline, if you, I guess you've, taking party status, but if you're gonna do anything more than that, I don't know, but I'm just letting you aware that there's some people out there that aren't happy with what this pipeline is proposed. So with that, I guess I'm done with my spiel. Thank you for coming. Um, Any questions? Commissioner Barth. Um, Mr. Guidi, uh, those bison do represent a pretty difficult problem for you and for the people putting this in. Yeah, a snow fence during construction isn't going to hold them back, and you probably don't want them falling into a 15-foot trench, um, etc. They've not had, and you know, I think each of us that have gone door to door, or have been in the service business, knows that every per person has a unique situation, and I, I guess I would hope that. Uh, you know, your situation is certainly unique, uh, but they must be able to solve these problems. And uh, I believe we have uh, filed for some interest in the in the pipeline, and we haven't, uh, as a county, we don't have, I don't believe, uh, a major issue with it at this time. <coughs> but I think you certainly have some very legitimate concerns there. Mr. Kelly, I'd like to ask Kirsten to just tell where we are that we have we have been following this thing very closely, and mm -hmm. if you could just explain a little bit. Sure, I'll, I'll give you an update on that. Uh, we did intervene uh, to uh, obtain party status, which means we have uh, status to, if we wish to, uh, offer testimony, uh, documentation, exhibits, etc. As we move forward in the process to preserve that right, we had to intervene for party status early in this, so we did that to preserve our right. If you choose to do so as representatives of the county to do that, uh, at this point we're in what's what's termed a discovery phase, which means um, the parties are uh, posing uh, interrogatories, requests for production, basically requests for documentation of, hey, what are you going to present at, at the hearings in opposition or in favor of 
uh, of the project. So that's where it is right now. We're in that phase where uh, the parties are responding to each other uh, with those requests. I believe the hearing is, the formal major hearing is set out for October at this point, but that could change. As you saw in the news with Keystone XL, that's, that's, that one has changed. It's a separate project, but those dates can change, so. Thank you, Kirsten. I, I just wanted to point out that we are involved in this thing and uh, uh, we are not letting it slide by. Okay. Well, I'll just worry with the proximity to Wall Lake that I don't think the public knows what's going on. We've gone to some people around Wall Lake and they don't even know, didn't even know about it. So, you know, the news media and stuff kind of haven't done too much with it either. We always see a big ad for XL Pipeline saying it's the best thing ever, but. Uh, there's some stories out there that scare you. May, so. may I ask a sure. question of the? Absolutely, uh, go ahead, uh, sir. Have you intervened as, as a par uh, yes. having party status? I got okay. party status. My sister has, and a, there's a few other landlords, and we've hired an attorney to represent us too. So. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you for coming. Yep. Any other public comments Robert. this morning? If not, we'll go to item number ten. Under regular business, item 10, review and consideration of applications for a Minnehaha County Service <coughs> Ambulance License for Dispatch Service Area 5, submitted by MedStar and Paramedics Plus. This was deferred from the April 21st meeting. Ken McFarland. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, as you know, last week you did consider uh, applications for service area five that we had received from both MedStar and Paramedics Plus. Um, the Commission last week uh, defer specifically deferred this action uh, until this week in order to gather more information and I think too importantly to allow members of the public uh, an opportunity to voice concerns or comments or opinions uh, on this particular issue. Um, as you can see sitting here before you today, there are three of you in that, and I just need to remind the Commission, and I have in fact notified uh, the applicants as well, that any action of the County Commission to be affirmative needs a vote of three individuals. So if there is any dissent amongst the three of you and that an item is automatically deferred until the next um, agenda, which would be next Tuesday. And that, so um, you have in your packets uh, both the applications from both firms. You have the review from Dr. Luther concerning his review of the applications. Both applicants are here this week. If you have additional uh, um, questions that you would like to ask of them, but this is the stated agenda time uh, because of the specific deferral last week uh, that you would consider this item. Um, if you have any questions of me, I'll stand by, but the applicants are also here if you have any other questions. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions for Ken? Not yet. Not yet? <laughs> Um, we did hear the uh, full applicant uh, review, if you will, last week when you were all here. Uh, we'd like to not repeat any of that unless we have questions about that. If you have anything else to add, uh, we certainly want to hear that. And then if there's someone in the audience who also wants to make a uh, statement, we'd be happy to hear those also. So. Uh, does anyone have any uh, additional comments from last week as far as the application process and what you've already uh, expressed to us in writing and verbally? You could certainly do that. <coughs> Jay Major, MedStar Paramedic Ambulance, President, CEO, Brandon, South Dakota, and Sioux Falls. Um, just a couple of things I'd like to add. Um, there were some comments last week made by, you know, the hum humble folks who wanted to keep things the way they were and so forth. And I guess the point I wanted to make here is we're talking about Area 5, and they've already got an area, and that's Area 3, so it doesn't really affect them. Um, if anybody in, in those areas, 1 through 6, want to use another service, even from Rapid City, to um, work with them if they're busy, 
they have a right to do that. So we're talking about Area 5. They have Area 3. Now, the other point I'd like to make, and I'm not sure I haven't even looked back here to see who's here. I will say that, uh, you know, the, the folks that we work with in Area 5, including uh, Renner, we've got a great relationship with them. Um, Split Rock, we have a great relationship with them. Valley Springs, uh, as you recall, back when we first started, uh, they had some uh, doubts. We have, they have no doubts anymore. We have a great relationship with them. So my point is, is we, uh, the two people that you see standing here, are sitting and standing in front of you, uh, we not only work the streets, but we're the ones here talking to you. Um, everything we've got and we've earned, we haven't bought in anything. So um, as we go through this process, I just want to clarify that we will have an ambulance committed to Area 5 on the side that, you know, Mr. Kelly uh, was concerned about with Wild Water West and so forth, you know, we'll, we'll have a dedicated ambulance on that side of Area 5. And plus, we also have ambulances, um, obviously, from, from Brandon that can get to uh, Renner within 12 minutes in the Split Rocks area, uh, area even a little quicker than that. So um, we have seven vehicles. And I think through the, uh, through the progression of what MedStar has done, uh, everything we have told the city of Brandon, everything we have told the city of, uh, or the county of Minnehaha County, we have done that. We've proven ourselves. When Dr. Luther reviewed the applications, Dr. Luther himself said that he didn't see any differences in the company. But I, but I think there's one big difference that uh, wasn't pointed out. He actually reviewed our service because he's watched our service since uh, since we've been here. The company from Texas is brand new. There's not anything that he could have reviewed unless he went to an area in Texas to review that company. So um, I think some of that is speculation. But what he has reviewed with MedStar, he has reviewed. He has looked at our charts. He has been part of our service since the onset of what we've had with the county. Um, and with that, I'll sit down. But I, I will say that we are we're very excited about, uh, about Area 5. And we feel we can do a real good job for the citizens there as we have in the rest of the area we've been covering. Thank you. Thank Mr. you, Chairman. Uh, we have two comments, two question questions. Two. Commissioner Kelly. Jay, you indicated you're going to place an ambulance in a, in, a, in, a, in a garage or something somewhere in that area between Renner and, say, Wally Corner or something, right? Yes, sir. Um, you will do that, you're going to do that before the contract takes effect? Well, uh, recall now we have a week or two, and if you vote on it today, we'll have one week less even at that point. So, I mean, as any you just haven't looked know, at sites, so I imagine, right? Yeah, you know, um, in the meantime, we can put an ambulance in that area. It may not be in a garage right away because that all takes some logistics and negotiations, which we've been looking at areas in that spot now. But um, the answer is we'll have an ambulance in that area uh, when it takes effects, whether it's in a garage or not. Okay. But we will have a garage and a place to house that ambulance in that area. Might be in your house. But, My um, house is in Area 5. <laughs> in, um, from your door to, to Raleigh Corner is about 24 and a half miles. And at regular driving speeds, it's just, just short of 30 minutes. I, I don't know what a code 3 speed, but I would imagine that would take five or five or six minutes off of that. Um, is, that a, is, is that an adequate response time, or are you going to have to call on call on your uh, uh, joint agreement to, to have a, somebody on site that can administer uh, at least an EMT level or higher. Uh, do, you, do you anticipate somebody like uh, Hartford Fire or, or, uh, or per, uh, per, what is it? paramedics plus um, responding or Sioux Falls Fire responding to those emergencies that are in that western and southern border? Those are good questions. Uh, first off, we're going to have an ambulance over there for that first call that comes in. So any additional calls, um, you know, we, we, uh, Gary and I have talked about this, and we've got six more additional ambulances at MedStar. So if a call goes out, we can take an ambulance and post it, say, in the Renner area to give that area a quick response. To answer your question, right now, Hartford Fire does a fantastic job. They have EMTs and medics on Hartford Fire that are first responders. And they respond to most of that area between Sioux Falls and the Humboldt area there. So they already are first responders, and they normally will get there between anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes. Um, they're normally the first ones I'm seeing as we speak. Um, again, the, the, the point is we will have an ambulance dedicated to that area. Now, most of the calls 
that we're talking about are going to be from Renner this way. That's where a majority of those calls are, which are going to be covered from the Brandon station where we have the majority of our vehicles. Are you saying Renner to the east? I'm saying from Renner to the east is okay. going to be a good majority of those calls. And, and as you can see, we're stationed real well to handle those calls with a timely response. On the other side is going to be not a lot of calls. It's going to be the less of the majority. And so and to put it in businessman's terms, for us to put an ambulance on this side, we are losing money. To have the majority on this side, we can make up the difference. So um, as we look at this as business people and as paramedics and people that know that response time matters, that is why we decided not to cover the whole area of five from Brandon, but to put an ambulance in an area that we know won't make money. But we make that up through the other businesses that we do. So, um, and there again, if there's any question about that, that's how we've run our business since we've started. Um, can, did you lose something in the contract when Sioux Falls changed? Did you lose the transport abilities within Sioux Falls? You know, we, um, back when, when the new administration took over, we were doing some things in Sioux Falls, and we had lost those. Um, right now, um, there's some things in the city of Sioux Falls that we did lose. We were, we were doing some contracts between some hospitals that we had to give up. Um, and they made an ordinance now that, that there's no, nobody that can go into the city of Sioux Falls and actually do any transport at this time. It's, it's locked down to one particular company, which is why we're taking that to a public vote. We're taking the non-emergency part of that um, action to the people and the people choose on the non-emergency side, not the 911 side. Uh, will this ordinance this, this ordinance change? How about Sanford has an ambulance and Avera has an ambulance? Uh, is this going to change that whole deal too on transports? Or? No, and, and is this so we're clear about the ambulances they have? Sanford has an ambulance and McKinnon has, actually Sanford has two. And what that does, that supports their air side. So they can go from the airport back to the hospital. They support their airplane with their ambulance. That's all they do. Um, so if, as I saw, right, if I saw one out south of town, I'd wonder where the airport is. Is that? I mean, I understand going out to their flight services, but sure. I, I guess I was surprised to see one down South Minnesota Avenue. Yeah, they may have had something else going on. Um, there, thank you. Hi, right, thank you. Commissioner Barth, did you have a question? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, uh, Commissioner Kelly asked most of my questions. I guess uh, I would ask one that I thought of during uh, Mr. Major's answers, um, if I may. Mm -hmm. uh, Jay, uh, you talked about, uh, you know, the distribution of business. If, if uh, you found out that there was more business on the west side, would you adjust your plan? Oh, absolutely. You know, we've, again, our history will prove that. Um, anything that we've taken with the county or the city, um, we have adjusted our plan accordingly which is why our response times in the city of Brandon are uh, absolutely less than four minutes per call, and our response time in the county far exceeds anything the county has recommended that we do. So um, our company has a standing history of, of, of watching the history of what's going on with our, with our call volume and doing what we need to do to be sure that the response times remain where they need to be. Having said that, Commissioner, um, as uh, the Paramedics Plus, the Texas-based company, said if they get the ter uh, territory, they would ask us for a mutual aid agreement, and we'll do the same with them. And uh, with the county ambulance services, you don't have to ask them because that's part of your county ordinance, that's part of your county license. That's automatic. So if Humboldt or anybody else wanted to, a mutual aid, that's part of our agreement that we've already got with all six or five services in the county. We would sign an additional one with Paramedics Plus. Um, to help them out in the city of Sioux Falls if they chose they needed that help or vice versa. Other questions? Um, Jay, uh, with Rural Metro uh, covering uh, district, uh, Zone 5, uh, do you know how uh, their response times were? Does anybody know? Uh, I guess maybe that's a question for Darren or Lindy Young here. But uh, that's part of the county records. Right, Darren, with I'll, that information. I'll let that one go. I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. Okay. Other questions? Thank you, Jay. Thank you, sir. Um, is there any comments from uh, Paramedics Plus who would like to add any additional discussion or? Good morning. Mike Bureau, Paramedics Plus. 
uh, in the city of Sioux Falls. Um, I just want to take a moment to say um, you have in front of your application, so you have the list of VIN numbers there of the 11 ambulances. Um, we're located at, uh, you know, at 4,000 there in the southern portion of the city. Um, Rural Metro has been covering this area for a long time. Um, I do not believe that they are unsuccessful. Uh, at least I've not been led to believe that in my conversations um, with the city and the county. Um, we brought over their entire staff. Um, they're familiar with their response area. Um, so I just wanted to clear those two things up very quickly. Um, if you have any further questions, I'll happily answer them. But otherwise, I'll take my seat. Do you have any questions for Mike? Sir? Commissioner Barth? Um, Mike, uh, what do you think your response times would be to, say, uh, Crooks or Tri-Valley or to Wall Lake? I believe roughly at this time um, in discussions, um, I think we're looking at about 15 minutes, okay. depending on traffic, familiarity, 15 to 20. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions for Paramedics Plus? We're good for now. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to uh, testify on behalf of their organization or their department, if you will? No one moving forward. Mr. <laughs> Mr. McFarland? <laughs> He's saved. I just, want to I just want to remind the commission that this particular license is for the May 21st, 19 or 2015 period uh, through the end of 2016. County licenses are typically for two years. And so we will be going through this process again for all of our service areas sometime next year in 2016 for relicensing because we are only for two years. Um, I also want to remind the commission uh, uh, that that is probably the time that the county will take a look and receive input from all of our ambulance providers about any suggestions that they may have for adjustments in the service areas and boundaries and then go through the necessary ordinance revisions to reflect those recommendations. But this particular license is just for the period of May 21, 2015 through the end of 2016. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Commissioner Barth? I guess I'd like to ask uh, MedStar the same question I asked Paramedics Plus on their response time to Certainly. Uh, Crooks and Tri-Valley and Wall Lake. Go ahead. Uh, I think I, pro I would probably go at the same time that, um, um, depending on if that ambulance is busy or not, the one that we have in that area. Uh, if the ambulance isn't busy, I'm looking at a five or ten minute response time to those areas. If that ambulance is busy, then we're looking at either mutual aid or, or extending a vehicle from MedStar. So, but the chances of um, that ambulance being busy and having two calls at one time in that area with, this, with the park's uh, population and the, and the call volume are pretty slim. So, uh, but not that it can't happen. So, it can happen. Thank you. Welcome. Any other questions or comments? Mr. Chair, I wonder if uh, Lindy Young or Darren Ketchum want to say anything, uh, nothing from... Uh, shaking their head at this point. If you have questions, I'd be glad to answer them, but I don't have any... Well, I would ask Darren, I guess. Uh, Darren, what... You better identify yourself. Darren Ketchum, Metro Communications, Sioux Falls. Uh, Darren, what has been the history of uh, rural Metro responding to the western... Uh, portion of the, the number five uh, primary service area? Well, as you're probably aware, the county's ambulance ordinance does not dictate response times from the station to the scene of uh, the incident. The county's ordinance uh, merely talks about from the time the call is dispatched to the time the agency acknowledges that call. Uh, that's really the only response time that's in the county ordinance. Uh, not saying we couldn't go back and run a report to find out what that information is, but it's not something that's tracked um, today as far as how long it takes one ambulance to get from point A to point B in the county. <coughs> so I, was, I couldn't offer you a, an opinion right now. I'd have to go back and run some numbers. 
Mr. Chair? Yes. You know, I guess I've heard from folks in Sioux Falls that uh, a response from rural metro often was fairly tardy and that the I heard uh, one person in a city uh, group suggest that he almost called the helicopter for an incident on Minnesota Avenue uh, because there was no ambulance available. Does that happen? Well, I think that it's kind of a gray area because you look at the system we have in place I think there's a misconception out there that people think when they call 911 that everybody's coming lights and siren as fast as they can as you all know we have a prioritized system that uh, not every call results in a lights and siren response you know roughly about half I want to say in this area were lights and siren type responses so certainly the calls that they're coming uh, you know, with the normal flow of traffic is going to be a longer response time than those where they're coming with their emergency lights. Um, so I think maybe that's part of it is just some misconception. You know, everybody, even here, I think at the county admin building, people wonder, well, why does it take so long for an ambulance to get here? And it's just because on a, I won't say it's not an emergency, because obviously if this is happening to you, it's an emergency. Uh, but in the grand scheme of thing, in a very large system like this, in order to most efficiently use resources and to safely deploy those resources, we uh, we don't send every call lights and siren. Other questions for Darren? If not, we're good to go. Anyone uh, have any other comments to make before we... Uh, Ask for a motion. Mr. Chairman, I, I'll make a motion and then I'll comment on it if I get a second. And your motion is? My motion would be to accept uh, MedStar as the uh, uh, provider in the primary district, Area 5. I'll second that. Okay, we have if a I motion may. and a second for, for uh, comments. You know, there's certainly been unease on the west side of the primary, uh, that District 5. And I've gotten several phone calls uh, from that area. Um, I can also say, though, that there was vehement opposition to MedStar when they first got licensed within the city of Brandon. I know people in Brandon that were making arrangements to have their body dragged to the edge of town so that rural Mo metro would pick them up instead of having MedStar pick them up. Um, there was, uh, and then when they got the, the larger district, District 6, I can remember a, a fire chief in a neighboring town absolutely basically pounding his fist in opposition. He's not opposing them anymore. The citizens of Brandon are not opposing them anymore. Those concerns have abated. Uh, I believe that uh, MedStar has fulfilled every promise that they have made. They've, they've demonstrated this more than once, and I think that uh, with their familiarity uh, with our county, uh, they'll be able to cover uh, primary service area five well. And there's always the opportunity to change things in, at the end of 2016. And uh, anyway, those are the reasons why I support MedStar at this point. Okay. Commissioner Kelly? Um, in, in area five in 2014, in PSA five, there were 576 calls, if my math is right. Uh, of those, 29 were life-threatening, were code four, which is a life-threatening situation. What we don't know with those, and I don't know if they have the information, is when a medical person was on scene, but that would, could come from Sioux Falls Rescue, Fire Rescue, it could come from a, a sheriff, deputy sheriff, it could come from from one of the cooperating stations. So that, together with uh, what they, I, d I don't know how much of that transport uh, there is in those regions, but I, I know that's a <coughs> fairly lucrative part of your business, I imagine. It's, and it sometimes will keep you keep you afloat in the weekdays. Uh, for that reason, I I would like to give MedStar a chance. I think every time they have. We have done something for them. They have met the challenge. And um, I just think we, we, we need to keep, you know, I, I'm a little concerned that there's no transportation competition within the city limits now. I don't know if there's restrictions on rates, but 
Uh, I really would like to see MedStar have a chance at this thing. That's why I second it. Any other comments, questions? Well, unfortunately, I have a difference of opinion on the two of the comments have already been made. I am concerned about response times, and I also think that uh, MedStar has a different communication system than uh, the Paramedics Plus group has, which is the rural, former rural metro group. So the concern is uh, a commu communication gap. And I also put a lot of... Uh, Credence and frankly, the conversations I've had with uh, people are, that are in that area, all uh, highly complimentary of the existing staff that was with Rural Metro and felt that they were comfortable with uh, the people who had joined the Paramedic Plus group. So I will be supporting Paramedic Plus. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. You know, keeping in mind that it appears that no action will happen today. I wonder if uh, I might uh, uh, move to withdraw my motion and suggest uh, deferring action till next week. Be up to the person second seconding it if they would do that. I will. It's going to be an automatic anyway. And, uh, <laughs> I will. There will be all five of us be here next week. As far as we know, all five will be here. Um, it, are you making that motion? I'll make that motion, sir. Okay. Sorry. Commissioner is second, seconding the uh, withdrawal, so this gets deferred one week to uh, May 5th? Yep. You May did, 5th. You did move and second. Yes, you did. Okay. And then we'll vote. We will vote. Okay. All those in favor of deferring this till May 5th, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion unanimously passes. What if it had not unanimously passed? I'm just kidding. <laughs> you get to sit here. You can stay here forever. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, we'll go to item number 11. Item 11 is consider approval of amendments to the Minnehaha County Inmate Guidebooks for the Minnehaha County Jail and Community Corrections Center. You Good don't morning, look Mr. like Palmer. Lieutenant Matson. No, I do not. <laughs> I do not. Roughly the same haircut, but close. Um, Jeff Grover, the warden at the county jail. I am just here for the second half of the approval of the inmate guidebooks. Um, I, Lieutenant Matson presented them last week. I believe you've had a chance to review them. And just looking to get them published. Does so anyone have any questions for Mr. Gromer? I have none. I move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the uh, county inmate guidebook. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Thank you. Thank you. Item 12 is consider recommendation for requests for adoption of speed limits on township highways from various townships in anticipation of SDCL 32-25-9.2, effective date of July 1st, 2015. Kirsten Katmeyer. All right. Thank you, Commissioners. Uh, I bring this uh, item to you kind of mostly as, a, as an informational item today to kind of bring you up to speed on a situation we might have with uh, uh, township uh, speed limits. Uh, it's been brought to uh, our attention through the highway department that there may be some discrepancies between the uh, township uh, road speed limits currently posted and those that have been uh, uh, given to us uh, as an informational matter and also for adoption under uh, uh, the primary statute to date, which is 3225.9.1. Under that system, uh, the township uh, makes a request of the county commission to put uh, speed limits in place of less than 55 miles per hour on any township roadway. Um, and then it comes before you as to whether to approve or, or deny that request. <clears throat> um, while we were in the mode of, of verifying and cleaning this up through the highway department, a bill was introduced at the legislature this year. Um, let's see if I have the bill number correct again here. It's 1121, House Bill 1121. Essentially, in the spirit of local control, that gives the township boards now direct control over the enactment of 
lower maximum speeds on their own roadways. Uh, it will amend the statute referred to 32259.2 to give them that direct authority to do that. Um, so what we have now is the highway department was uh, working on uh, getting verification of, of an inventory of our township uh, speed limits to date for the purposes of bringing them all before you uh, for formal approval or denial. But in light of this new statute that I wanted to make you aware of, um, as a policy matter, you can certainly um, place that at this point back in the hands of the various township boards to directly affect those uh, lower maximum speeds if they choose to do that. Uh, so I, I guess I wanted to inform you of, of that process going on and uh, uh, put before you whether you wanted to go ahead with the old method under 9.1 at this point or uh, direct that these uh, requests be returned to the township boards for uh, direct local control on those uh, lower maximums. And I believe, Shannon, are you the point guy for the highway department today if they have any other questions about the highway department's uh, yes. role in this? I'm here for that purpose. Thank you. Any questions of Kirsten? Mr. Chair, uh, Kirsten, um, so the speed limits that are shown on this uh, printout here, those are the ones in existence that have already been uh, approved by the county commission after the township request under the old system, since the new system doesn't kick in until July 1. I believe that printout that you have labeled township speed requests are the ones that are before you now for consideration, not the ones that are have been passed in the past. Correct. Shane, correct me uh, if I'm essentially, wrong. Mr. Barth, Commissioner Barth, that that's the list of outstanding, uh, incorrect, un, uh, illegal postings because the commission hasn't approved them. When we did our sign inventory for the sign replacement project, we discovered all of these speed zones that are not currently approved by the commission, and so by allowing the townships to do this as effective July 1st, that's the list we're kicking back to the townships. If I may, so for example, this one on River Bluff Road, I remember I believe when we reduced that, and so it's not posted to the lowest, to the lower level, is that the? They may have chosen to reduce it further than what the previous legal posting was. Okay. Does the sheriff get to know this for enforcement? We get a call on occasion to verify such things. I don't know the method of, other than publishing it in the meeting minutes, uh, you know, it's kind of a safe, safe assumption every black and white sign should be enforceable. Commissioner Kelly? Kirsten, can we, uh, can we add anything to this bill or on July 1? The townships totally control the speed limits deals and the procedures and everything else. Well, my, my, my question yeah. would be one notification to the to the sheriff's office. And sometimes the townships are a little lax in their, right. their communications. The new statute, while it gives them the power to enact it directly without your intervention or approval, if you will, they still have to do a formal notification. And that's the form that Highway is prepared as part of this packet for the meeting that says, hey, you know, we're informing you that we have enacted this this uh, lower speed limit. That is still required by the new statute. This is an example of what we're recommending as being the formal notification. Excuse me, this is an example of the formal notification form that we're hopefully gonna allow them to, you know, streamline it. So, but number one, it's uniform. Number two, uh, it's easy for them to do this correctly. And later on in this in this notification form, it leads them to kind of, based on some engineering and transportation principles, to, to post it correctly. And uh, this form has gotten kind of, it's been well received by the Association of Towns and Townships, and it's, I think it's being used by other townships already. Well, I, I think that form at least requires some study into this thing and not just at the desire of two or three people but um and we would get that and then we could distribute it we you could distribute it to the commissioners and to the appropriate law enforcement agencies 
Is that what Commissioner Kelly? Commissioner Kelly, as it reads now, the, the townships would be informing, you know, that the little memo says to Minnehaha County Commission Office. So I imagine the Commission Office would share it with the Sheriff's Department as well as the Highway Department. Okay. Commissioners, what we would do in this particular instance, again, they would come to the Commission Office as kind of a the central repository, as it were, at least the notification. But not only would these be going to the Highway Department and the Sheriff Department, but my recommendation would also be that, you know, you have a spot on your agenda that a lot of times there's not even an item, you know, that requires your specific um, action on it, but it's under notices and requests. And so we would list these as a notice on our agenda that we've received this notice. It would become part of our minutes so that folks would see that and be included in the minutes. And that's one of the ways of keeping the public informed that that has in fact happened. It'd be just and, like the raffles. Yes. It's a notice. Uh, Kirsten, and if I may add something, that method that Ken talks about, um, if you're concerned with enforceability, having that in an official minutes of the you meeting bet. shows that the county was informed of it. Therefore, if everything else was proper with the enactment, it's enforceable if we, if we or someone else has to go to court to, um, you know, on a, on a speeding ticket, that we can point to that as you proper bet. enactment. So that does help okay. so I would add if everything works correctly everything's good we have no control if townships are actually going to supply the notice we hope we hope that they comply with the law and do so any other questions mr. chair do we need to take action on this uh, one? there yeah there is one question that's if we don't take action on, on these the penny the, the ones that are requested here, or do, is, are those the ones you do not have a request on and they would have to file one? Are those, if I may, Commissioner, um, are those requests in final form before you right now or are those still be worked, be worked, in, are They're, those still being worked out? The final form as submitted by the townships was incorrect to the satisfaction yeah. of the old way. Mm -hmm. To do so would take quite a bit of time. Uh, we've spent probably 160 hours already dealing with um, some of these things. So um, it would be a burden on the highway department to do so, but we will do that if that is the commission's will. We recommend, frankly, to just kick it back to the townships and, and to let them do the notice using this form up until July 1st. So if we do nothing, then everything just stays like it is until July 1. That well, I... I, I don't think that's correct um, because the townships have sent these requests to the commission for approval as currently posted. Um, they wouldn't be effective to July 1st unless the commission directs us to act on them under the kind of old rule. Right. Which one makes more sense? I recommend July 1st. Kirsten, I believe, concurs. I think you're going to be duplicating a lot of work twice if you do it that way. I would also add I have some concerns a little bit that if we go through the old method, then we'll have to clean up the old method <laughs> to have the new method supplant. I don't know how those two methods, if you impose one through the old method and they impose one through the new method, we may have to do some cleanup after the fact if we continue to enact them in the meantime. But you certainly can. You certainly can do what you want with these requests. That's before your... Uh, Mr. You. Chair, I'm usually one confuses everybody else, but now I'm confused. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> what do you want us to do? Do you have a suggestion? <laughs> <laughs> Are you differing with... No, I concur department? with the highway department. That we just wait until July 1. I, I concur that the best course of action probably is to send them back in the aggregate and have them enact them through direct local control. As of July. As of July As 1. of July 1st. So the motion would be to send these back? Correct. Correct. My, that's my motion. Second. <laughs> Well, I'm glad that Jeff is no longer confused. That's not true. <laughs> we have a motion and a second to send these back to the townships and become effective as of July 1st as per the uh, 
South Dakota codified law, correct? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Three to zip. Thank you. Thank you. Item 13 is Minnehaha County Commission Liaison Assignment Reports. Does anyone have any liaison reports? Uh, good news yesterday. Um, three of us went up, four of us went up to pier, leaving at something like middle of the night. And uh, got there finally, we got there two and a half hours early. But uh, we were there to, to um, request that the e board, they had 19 requests for stomach studies in, uh, in front of them. Um, they were going to pick two. So we were successful in, we uh, talked to the, you know, we each made comments, not uh, not very lengthy, to the e-board. There was some, I, I had written a letter to all of them earlier, and I think there was some conversation with, the, with some of the members. And uh, I like to think that the fact that we were up there made it be one of the first items taken in the afternoon. And surprise to me they made a motion to accept it and unanimously approved that this one and then they went on to uh, to another one and i don't know how how many they considered but uh, uh we were as far as i'm concerned we were successful as far as the cynics are concerned they don't know <laughs> but uh, they uh there will be a stomach study on it it's uh, according to the paper, and I don't know. I, I got the feeling up there that it was pretty broad, and that I imagine the chairman of that group will have that'll be the legislators only. But obviously, the public is invited in to talk. Um, they have some latitude in what they're going to cover, but uh, it's specifically Ken. Do you know? Is it specifically financial? I, the wording, I, I, I guess, I didn't quite have, but. if you would just give me one second. The, the original text of the requested summer study was for a review of the functions of county government, law and regulations regarding counties, county revenue and expenditures, and alternative funding solutions. The scope of the requested study was to examine the duties assigned to the county by law and regulations, specifically evaluate expenditures for law enforcement, legal fees for court-appointed attorneys and prosecutors, court costs and county jails, and evaluate the trends and expenditures on whether costs should should or may be transferred to another entity, review sources of funding available to counties, and including taxes and fees, and determine whether the fees should be updated, uh, revised, review the statutes for outdated and obsolete provisions, and make form and style changes to Title VII, and evaluate the fiscal impact on counties that have significant areas of property owned by the federal government or placed in trust include other responsibilities given to counties to administer correction facilities, public infrastructure, document recording, registration, and elections. At the meeting, there was a specific request to expand that into the um, organization of counties in the state, how we are organized, and also to explore what kind of levels of intergovernmental cooperation exist between counties, municipalities, and then counties and townships and other counties, that sort of thing. And that, I think, basically is what, and that, they, that I, I was that's what they passed. So it's a pretty broad range of topics that they will be looking at as, it, as they affect counties. But it's a good sign. I think it's an opportunity for us to get our message back to the legislators outside of the, the, the cloud of 500 bills that you're fighting against and get it done. Summer study reports come back in, and uh, uh, I think the legislature, especially if there's specific uh, legislation in, in the summer study report, probably has a better, much better chance of passing than what we've seen in the past. So. Okay. Other comments? Thank you for making that trip in the middle of the night, evidently. And probably got home in the middle of the night. That was Ken's fault. Okay. He wouldn't go the speed limit. <laughs> <laughs> the only people... Is there any other... <laughs> 
<laughs> any other liaison reports? How about any new business? Old business? If not, I'd like a motion to go into executive session for personnel and contracts. It's my motion. Second. A motion and a second for executive session for personnel and contracts. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> motion unanimously passes 3-0. If not, it would have been trouble.